or whatever happened to me. Of course we're not smart enough. Of course we're not resourced enough. Of course we're not strong enough. And of course, none of us are good enough. But God has chosen the foolish, the weak, the lowly, and the meek, and the timid, and the too shy, and the too loud, and the not very polished, and the not very accomplished, and the not very connected, so that whatever is going on in your heart, or in your job, or with your family, or with your money, or with your children, or with your health, and it looks really, really bad, Remember, but God. Those two words, that's what I want you to remember for every battle in your life in this season. For every cross in your life in this season. For every struggle in your life in this season. For every setback in your life. For every question in your life. For every unanswered prayer in your life in this season, for every thorn in your flesh in this season, for every limp in your hip this season, I want you to remember, but God, only two words you need. Two words that are woven into some stories in the Bible that you could overlook them if you're not careful, and yet those words change everything. You could do a whole study on every time that it says, but God, in the Bible, and you'd be blessed. God created every man with a purpose. It is possible to do good things, but not. The things that are best based on God's purposes for you. Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. Good deeds are not a substitute for rightness. Knowing and fulfilling your Purpose is the only way to do what is right. Since God created everything with a purpose, men need to go to Him if they want to know their true reason for being. If they try to change His plans, they are in essence fighting against themselves and the way they were designed to function. I made myself a commitment to pray. That was my personal development spiritually. I still do that today from age 15. I decided I would fast at least twice a year, 20 days once every year, and 14 days at one time every year. I've been doing that since I was 15 years old. I still fast, 21 days without food, just water, and 14 days without food, just water. I still do that up to this very day. Now, that was my regiment which I keep. So people look at me and they say, how did you become so matured spiritually at such a young age? How did you know so much? How come you are so seemingly intelligent or have so much wisdom? It's not a gift. It's a result. And so if you're going to grow as a male spiritually, you have to organize your growth. The same way you organize yourself to go to the gym and work up with your weights and to jog every morning, you got to do the same thing spiritually. You got to organize your life. And then the third thing I decided to do was I would read four books every month. I made that decision when I was 21 years old. I am now 53. So you can calculate how many books I've read over the past few years from 21 to 53. And I read these books and I try to keep my commitment. My most precious gift in my life, next to my wife and my kids, is my library. I'm reading a book right now. I read on the way here and going to be reading it when I get back on my trip back. It's called The Politics of Jesus. It's a very intriguing book. And I got another book waiting for me, back for me to start reading as soon as I get home for my next week. So I spend at least $200 US every week, every month, sorry, on books. It's the quality of books that I buy. Someone said to me one time, how can you afford to spend that, a lot of mo that amount of money on, on books? I said to him, if you think ignorance is, if you think knowledge is expensive, try ignorance. And I told them, I can't afford not to buy the books. Whatever you invest in, you become good at. 
Whatever you invest in, you become good at. Whatever you invest in, you become good at. Men, you need to invest in your development. You invest hundreds of pounds every year in sports games. So you're good at the sports. You're good at knowing the names of the sports players. You're good at knowing the scores. But you don't know anything spiritually because you don't invest in that area. Some of you invest in clothes, and I, I, I like good clothes too. But you pay 200 pounds for a shoe, 300 pounds, 400 pounds for a suit, and then nothing on books. If there's one thing this conference must do with, with your life is to re-anchor you to become a heavy anchor. And you have to invest in your development. Your father never read books. You never saw him read books, so you don't have a desire to read. There was no environment in your house to read. Maybe all he wanted to know was what was the cricket score, what was the, the, the soccer score. He had no passion for other books, just the newspaper. And so you have no desire to read. And I love the way Paul mentored Timothy. He said, Timothy, when you come to see me, don't forget my books. He said that in prison. Even in jail, he was thinking about his library. Bring my books, he says. Please, become men. If a man wants to know his reason for living, he must look to God and his. Manual the Bible not to other males. If he looks to himself or others, he will travel an unreliable and hazardous course in life. A man will fulfill his purpose only if he seeks the mind of his maker with all his heart. When God's plans unfold before him, his fragmented life will become an orderly whole, and he will become the man he was meant to be. The answer for males in the 21st century is to one, define their worth. Based on God's purpose, rather than society's roles, two, learn God's vision for their lives, and three, continue to live in the truth of who they were created to be.